For today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to paint this little chickadee using watercolors. I'll walk you through each step, starting with drawing out the chickadee and then laying down each layer of watercolors. So to start things off, you're going to need a pencil, a couple of different size brushes. I like to use the Princeton angled brush as well as a fine liner brush. Um, and then I have a medium flat brush that I use for some of the splatters, but really you could use almost any larger brush. And then for colors, I'm gonna be using black, Prussian blue, teal, lime green, and a little bit of yellow ochre as well. All right, so first things first, we're gonna draw the basic shape of the chickadee. So you'll wanna have the round head. You can do sort of a upside down U shape. And then we're gonna come around and have the body. My guy's a little bit chubby, so we're gonna make him a little skinnier. And you're wanting to keep your pencil lines nice and light. Then you're gonna draw the beak, and the beak is a V shape that comes back into a smaller V shape with a line through it. Then we're gonna draw the cap of the chickadee, so that kind of goes straight and then up. With a little eye here, and the eye is fairly round. The little white dot, we're gonna leave that little white dot white. So then we come meet up in the back and come down and go straight across and up by the beak again. And then we'll come up the back and do a strip straight across for the chest. And we're gonna draw a little bit of a wing under here and then a little bit more of one on this side. And then we'll draw a branch. So for the branch, you just wanna draw a straight line going up that gets thinner at the end and then we'll have it getting wider and wider as it makes its way back down. I'm gonna draw another little twig coming out here and wider towards the bottom. And then we're gonna draw a little snow coming off it. So just kind of loosely drawing a line that follows the contour of the branch. And then we're gonna have a tail coming out the bottom. some lines on the tail. We're keeping this drawing nice and simple. And so that's pretty much it for the drawing. So with watercolors, it's always important to work from lighter to darker. So on this painting, we're gonna start with the background and then move our way through the tummy, cheek, and tail. All right, so we'll add some clear water. We'll make our way around the paper, just adding clear water at random. You don't need to be too careful with this. You don't want it to be uniform. You want it to be a kind of like a blob on the page. And you wanna make sure you follow the perimeter of the chickadee. So you're not going into the chickadee itself, but staying around it. So if I'm moving too fast, feel free to pause it and catch up. As you get more comfortable with your brush, you'll be able to work faster, but feel free to use the pause button as much as is needed. You'll notice my page is wrinkling up quite a bit. I didn't tape the page down. I found sometimes find it easier not to. All right, so we'll start on this side now. So we're gonna take a bit of the Prussian blue and just follow the contour of the chickadee. And because it's still wet over here, it's gonna really bleed out. And I like that look. That's the look I'm going for here. So we're gonna take a little bit of teal now and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're wanting it to be a blue sky in the background. This is a snowy winter day. This chickadee's quite fattened up from the for the winter. And we're not gonna follow the whole chickadee, just certain parts. And the wetter it is, the more the water is going to bleed out. So if it dries as you're going, it's not gonna bleed out. So you're gonna wanna re-wet it. And the way to re-wet it while you have water on the page is to start with clear water further back and then pull into the color. If you pull the color out, you're gonna end up with brush strokes all over the page and we don't want that. So next thing, I'm gonna take that medium flat brush that I told you about. We're gonna do some splatters on the page. And the reason I like to do them right now is because when the page is still wet, you're gonna notice that some of them look solid like that and some of them bleed like that. And we're really wanting that nice mixture. So 
So I'm adding quite a few for now. And we're gonna add more as it dries, but that's a good start. So next we're gonna move into the tummy. And the reason I wanna do the tummy relatively quickly is because I want some of this color in the background to actually bleed into the stomach. That's part of the charm of loose watercolor that I like. I like when the colors sort of bleed together. So we're filling in the whole stomach. And like I said, if you touch some wet of the background, it's gonna bleed right in and that's what I want. Now, if you leave some spots white, either by accident or on purpose, that can look really nice as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue right here. And then I'm gonna add some yellow ochre over here. Now the stomach is gonna be left mostly white. This is the only color we're adding down is these light shades. And that's because we're not gonna leave the tummy perfect white. In nature, there is no like absolute white. Either the chickadee is gonna be a little dirty, it's gonna have different shades on it, and that's what we're wanting to achieve for the stomach. So I'm gonna take that flat brush again and just add some splatters so that that can dry. Add some teal splatters over here. I'm always kind of adding more and more as I go. So same concept for the cheek. We're gonna go fill that in. Clear water. And then we're gonna actually add a little teal up here because I want it to look like the background's fading into the bird, so. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that lime green that I referenced earlier and just drop that in right here. And then a little yellow ochre just over here. And then lastly, we're gonna do the tail. So the tail, you can just fill it all right in. Don't worry about leaving any spaces. We'll just fill it completely in. And for the tail, I wanna reference the teal that you see here. I wanna reference that at the top of the tail. That way it looks like the tail has continued on so that it continues on behind the branch. Just gives that effect more if you have the colors meeting up there. And I'm gonna take some Prussian blue and just put it on the top bottom and just let it do its loose watercolor thing. All right. So now that we've done all of that, we're gonna let it dry and I'm gonna speed up the process using a blow dryer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the second layer now. And the second layer basically repeats the first layer, but you're gonna want this first layer to show up in behind. So for this, we're not gonna have it quite cover as much. So we're just gonna do a smaller blob for the second layer. And then we're gonna have the same concept. So you come in by the chickadee, except this time I want some of that blue to drip off the page. So we're gonna add a little more water this time and then lift up the page. I keep adding water till it drips down. I'm gonna add another one over here. This one I'll do dark blue as well. And then if you add quite a bit of water to the page and lift it up, it should drip down. Maybe I'll add one on the tail as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit here, a little bit of water, and then I'll lift up the page. All right, just a few fun little drips. Now we're gonna do the belly again, except this time we're not gonna fill it completely. We're just gonna do a little bit and then just darken it a little. And then I'm gonna take a brush and do some splatters. I'm gonna do some blue splatters on the background. So I'm just kind of moving my way around adding dimension. With watercolor, you'll want the first layer to show through underneath the second layer, and that's why it's important to work in multiple layers, because it just creates a bit more interest. Usually on a painting, if, if I was taking my time, if it wasn't, if I wasn't trying to do a simpler chickadee, I would have six or seven layers on this chickadee. But for the sake of instruction, I think let's just have a couple for this one. All right. Add a bit more yellow up here. 
So every time I add color, I add clear water first. I'm never just adding the clear water straight down or the color just straight down. All right, so we're gonna let this dry right away again. I'm just gonna come back to that tail again. I just feel like it needs to be a tiny bit darker. So I'll blow dry this before we move into the black. Cause if we do the black right away, all of this yellow, it'll pull the black into it and it'll become quite muddy. So we'll blow dry it in between. All right, so our background and tummy has had chance to dry so we can go on with the next part. Um, we're gonna start with the head. So for the head, we're gonna be doing a black cap chickadee. So that means that the head's gonna be black but we're not wanting it to be a true black. We're gonna do a mix of blues and purples to make up the black. And we'll use some black as well to get it really dark, but I want some of those blues to show through underneath. So first things first, just like every other part, we're gonna do the clear water first. And then we're gonna start dropping in some blue, just like that. And we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and move on to the next part. This is the little strip that goes along the chest. And for this part, I'm gonna use a little purple this time. So we're gonna drop in some purple. And then a little blue. And the reason for this is that way when we add the black, it's gonna show through with it. So you're gonna see black with hints of purple hints of blue underneath. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna take the black and try and get your black as dark as possible. So you really wanna, um, we'll call it smush the brush in the black for a while. And then we're gonna follow the perimeter of the head. So we're gonna put black up here. And we're gonna wanna have some slight feathers. So using the tip of your brush or a small brush, you're just gonna wanna go like this and add a few little plucky hairs because this is a very poofy winter chickadee. So we're gonna have just a few feathers that kind of go up on the head. It's just kind of a cute look for this little guy. Then we're gonna come around and we're wanting it to get quite dark so it might seem like it's super dark but as it dries, it's gonna lighten. So you're always wanting to continuously be adding more black. And as it dries, you're gonna see it literally turning to gray in front of your eyes. So not to worry, you can keep adding layers of black. And so I'm using my brush to add a few little feathers. So it's not a perfect line. And I find this is the layer that really helps the little chickadee kind of come to life. Adding that black. Then we're gonna come around with the black and we're gonna do this little wing here that we, so just adding varied pressure, we're gonna come around. And same with down here. Come around and add that little wing here. Wraps up. And then we can do a little bit on the beak as well. So for the beak, we're gonna come around and add the top of the beak. And then for the bottom of the beak, we don't actually want to connect them. We're going to leave a little thin white line between them. I'm going to let this continue to dry. I'm going to go down to the bottom and add the line, black lines on the tail. I like to always bounce around my paintings, so. That way, as one thing's drawing, the other is being worked on. So I'm just using varied pressure to sort of bring around and draw lines on the tail. So this is really setting up and drying nicely, but I'm gonna wanna darken it a bit more because as I said, as it dries, it just continuously gets lighter. So I'm just gonna add a little more blue here, a little blue here, because it's still nice and wet. So this is a good time to add some more. And then I'll use a little purple over here. And 
and then add some black over top again. Oops. Actually, I want to draw a little feathers, a little bit of feathering back here. All right, and now I'm gonna also work on the little eye. So the eye, you can do it while it's still all wet. It doesn't make a difference because what you're wanting to do, and this is very important, is we're wanting to leave some little hints of white around the eye. So we're gonna draw your eye shape. And it's okay if not all of it has white around it, but you're wanting to leave a little bit of white, and then we're gonna leave a little circle in the middle. So you're gonna see a tiny bit of white here, maybe some here, wherever you see fit, and then leave a little bit of white for the white of the eye. That's very important that you leave a little bit of white so that you can see where the eye is. If for whatever reason you accidentally color it in and your whole thing becomes a big black blob, you can take some white paint after, either some gouache or some poster paint or some acrylic paint, and just draw that line back in. Same with, with the beak. Just because I know sometimes when you're starting out, you don't have quite that control that you often do as you get more used to working with watercolors. So if you fill that in, it's not a big deal at all. All right, so now that we've done that, just darkening a few of those lines again, just because, like I said, they lighten. Sound like a broken record. Black just keeps getting lighter. So now we're gonna work on the snow on the branch. So for the snow, I'm gonna want a bunch of the snow to drip, and I'll show you how I do that. So just like everything else, we're gonna fill in all the snow. So we're just gonna put clear water along it. Doesn't have to be perfect. You leave some white spots, that's okay. And then I'm gonna take some blue and just kind of drop it in here and there on the branch. And just drop it in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some little pools of water, say right here, and then I'm gonna direct the water where to go. So I'm telling it where to go and then I'm gonna put a bunch of water there and lift the page up. So I'm gonna do the same thing here bunch of water, tell it where to go, and then lift the page up. And then same with right here. I wanna tell it where to go. I'm gonna add a little teal over here to this one. And then I'll tell it where to go. All right, so I think that's quite a lot. I actually noticed it's a little too balanced here, so I'm gonna add another little drop. I don't like when my drips are too balanced. It bothers me, so I'm gonna add another one right here. All right, so now that, that uh, all the drips have been done, we're gonna go back in and do the branch, but we need all of that to be dry, so we're gonna go ahead and give it another little blow dry now. All right, so now that this branch has dried, we can go back in and add the gray and black. So we're gonna go over some of the blue. And we're gonna be careful not to go over the drip. I want some of those drips to show through. So if I went black straight over them, you wouldn't see them through. So that's no good. So we're gonna stop right here. And just add a bit of like a bark texture. So just using the tip of the brush, I'm going to And then I'm gonna come through and keep going. So I'm just taking black, not even adding water first. I'm just adding a little definition. So I'm gonna add, so I add a little here. I can take clear water and then go over top. Oops, I have blue gun on my brush there, but that's okay. So we're just going through and with varying shades of black, we're going over top. If you add a, go back and add a little more back here, it's gonna be darker and that's what we want. So I'm gonna outline this and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Outline it in black and then I'm gonna take some clear water and actually 
fill some of it in. I'm going to take some dark gray, and that'll get you that real variation you see. It's just a little trick for when you're starting out. And then I'm actually going to take some thin black and just add a little in some spots on the top of the branch. Not all of them, but just some. Let, it, let the brush kind of skip off the page just to add a little bit of definition between Right, and then I want to come back and darken that eye again. So I'm going to take a really fine brush this time around. And I'm going to draw the eye, being careful to leave that little white spot. And then I actually want to darken up the head a little bit again. So just following the same pattern as before, but this time I'm just laying the black straight down adding a little blue inside it. So I'm just always darkening it. The beak got pretty dark this time, so I'm not going to be dark enough. And I'm going to use a little purple here. Because if you build the blues and purples, it'll come out quite dark, almost like black. But you'll notice it's not quite black. And that can be nice. just darkening those areas again. And then I'm going to do add a few more splatters. Now. So we're almost at the end of this painting. You can always add more. You don't have to stop here. If you want to add some of those are a little dark, so I'm going to take some clear water go over top, a splatter, some teal. So I'm just kind of doing Maybe a little bit of black splatters where the chest is. Maybe a little teal splatters on the tail. Some snow. And then I add clear over top of those so that they vary in size. That's how I get that real varied look as I threw some clear, some big ones down, and then I take clear water and splatter it over top, and then it changes the size of them all. Maybe a few green ones. A few more yellow. And it's gonna look a little crazy right now, but as it dries, it won't look as muddled. So we're gonna let that dry now. Actually, I'm just noticing some of these are a little too big, or too dark, sorry. I don't want them to draw too much of the attention away from the head. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it too. All right, so we'll let it dry and then I'll show you the finished product. If you enjoyed painting this video with me, just be sure to hit the like button below and hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.